Pino Palladino needs little to no introduction from us bass players. But if you're one of the few who don't know about him, then I suggest you read up on him. Uh, because he's had an extraordinary career. And I mean, he's still playing, so he's still doing it. But um, he is a remarkable bass player. And we are going to talk about his melodic mastery on Paul Young's Wherever I Lay My Hat, That's My Home. Before I dig into the melodic mastery of this song, which Pino Palladino did so great, uh, I would like to uh, remind you that you need to watch the end of the video because uh, I'm going to show you a couple of clips from a very uh, true and honest and funny interview uh, made uh, with with Pino Palladino. Um, make, sure, make sure to stick to around to the end or skip to the end bit because you can see how humble and great uh, Pino Palladino seems to be. And I do believe that you could be the greatest uh, musician alive and don't get any gigs if you're not a good guy and a humble person. So I do believe that that interview you're going to see in the end of the, this video uh, proves uh, that um, he is a, is a cool guy to hang around with. Uh, I would like to meet him one day if that's even remotely possible. Anyways, and also if you like this channel, please help me and subscribe to it. Uh, that would mean a lot to me. Anyways, let's dig in. So, Paul Young, wherever I leave my hat, that's my home. Apparently that is, uh, which I, I didn't know for sure, uh, is a Marvin Gaye song. Uh, so it's a cover, uh, but it actually turned out to be one of the Paul Young's hit singles. And uh, apparently they struggled making that album and, and finding out which song was which going to be the hit. But then after Pino were allowed or Pino dared to do and take up so much space in that music, in that song, um, the bass were the secret ingredient uh, for this song and it, it became a hit single. And Pina Palladino is playing a fretless uh, precision, oh, sorry, not a precision bass, I think it's a fretless music man. It's definitely a fretless uh, bass guitar, that's for sure. If you know for sure which type of bass it was, please let us know in the comments. But I'm guessing either a P bass or, which I think I see from the video, I think it's a music man, fretless. Anyways, he plays a fretless bass. There's uh, in the in the track, it's a lot of chorus effect on it. Uh, and there's some points where I think there might be an octave pedal on the fretless bass, which sounds really, really cool. But it, it might also be him playing the octaves. I'm not really sure. Again, if there's anyone watching this who knows uh, more facts, then please put them in the comments and get that get that comment section uh, going and, and the, the conversations going, because I would love to hear from you. Um, yeah, we're gonna dig into uh, wherever I lay my hat, and we're gonna. Uh, so I'm I'm just gonna go through the song uh, on these. Uh, I got I got four four points, um, four places in the song where I think we should recognize what uh, what Pino is doing and analyze it. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's there's many other points in the song which is remarkable, uh, but I've I've pointed out a few. We're going to start at the uh, 0 30 seconds, uh, which is the intro. And it's, 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 it's amazing how much space the bass can take on a hit single. Uh, I mean, talk about almost being the solo instrument. It's like from the interview, you can see later in the video, the producer and the engineer says that it's, it's more or less a duet between Paul Young and Pino Palladino. Uh, which is amazing. So check this out, look at this. So this is even before Paul Young has be, uh, begun the lyrics. I mean, he's been uh, just uh, doing some notes there, but uh, Pino Palladino intro. So he actually puts a chord there in the beginning. From 
about my analysis is it definitely starts with a B flat major and the song is in B flat major so it's perfect. It's kind of cool to do a third interval on the fretless bass. I mean, I, I know what you might be thinking. Yes, I am playing a fretted and a short scale bass. So this is nothing like how it's going to actually sound or uh, technically be if you play a fretless full scale bass. But this is what I got and I don't have a fretless bass guitar yet, but I really want one for sure. Intro. Goes down a D minor here. And slides up to a G minor. Goes there. And then it goes uh, again. But this time not not with the third. Ah, uh, sorry. And then it goes. Right? So the intro bit from there. And then. And moving on. Yeah, that's a very nice melody and a great start to a song but technically very difficult to play in tune, even with chords and everything, on a fretless bass. I mean, so much respect uh, for making that possible. Nice melody, very good. And then we go to a very, very cool trick, which I, I actually thought uh, only Victor Wooden made this up. Um, but little did I know that uh, this happened. I'm actually not sure when this song came out. Help me out and put that in the comments below. What year, what year this song came out. Anyways, check this out, check, check this out. For I'm the type of boy who is always on the road. Wherever I lay my hat, that's my home. All right, so that's an overtone. It goes double. And then if you press down after you've done the overtone, or pinched harmonics or whatever you want to call it. And then you push down and then you can slide down that overtone. But obviously well, on a fretless bass, that's going to sound super soft and nice. And I, like I said, I, I actually thought Victor Wooden was the one who made this uh, technique up. So um, the chorus and it goes, goes up to the ninth. And then back down. And then. How cool, right? Such a, such a cool trick to do. All right. So you do the overtone and then you press down and then you can either move up or down. You can slide the note. And Again, on a fretless bass, very nice, very, very nice. We got a set, the third one here, 132. Now, uh, sorry, no, yeah, 132. Which, um, the thing to, to notice here is that um, it's been a lot of long notes, it's been very melodic, but as soon as we hit this part of the, uh, the song, the, the pulse changes and you can see you can hear that it's almost just the bass in the song that makes that pulse change such a massive impact i'll give you a little bit more context you had romance did you break it by chance So I'd like for you to know that I'm not 
Right, and then we're back to the chorus. So it, it changes the whole um, pulse of that section. And uh, obviously they are using a lot of the long notes and the slides as a really good effect. It's almost like a synth, uh, but just done on the bass. So he, he slides up one octave and, and hits the third and the seventh, uh, sorry, and the second, the ninth. And you can hear his slides all the time, like... Right? And then back again. And this, this is really cool. It goes up to... Sorry, I missed that. So it's an F major arpeggio, F major 7. Sorry, that's not what it is. It's an F major arpeggio. But it, uh, he uses the, the fourth as well. So he hangs. It's very nice. So so that, that lick there is worth learning in different chords as well. So this is on an F major chord. Starting on the fourth note, you can do it in, in G major. Right? All teachers and all uh, people that you talked about is always talking about learn your arpeggios and practice them. Here is a musical way to actually use those arpeggios in a very, very good way. All right, we got this, uh, this last point uh, that I want to analyze. It's on the 230. And here we have another new pulse. So again, he is using the chords in the uh, like arpeggios and the chord notes in a beautiful way. Here, he is really taking up a lot of space, being busy in the background and uh, playing all these subdivisions uh, of the song. Um, I really love the, um, the just the energy that he provides in that. Oh, you keep telling me, you keep telling me I'm your man. I think it is that, it, it's tough to hear, but I think it's like... The, um, and then back to the G, and then it got a beautiful, nice... Like that. So it goes up to G minor. Fourth, fifth, seventh, third, and back down to the root. Ah, uh, maybe he goes. Yeah, he doesn't hit that one. I'm your man. What do I have to do? Yeah. major again and down the third you keep telling me you keep telling me i'm your man what do i have to do Super elegant, super nice. Takes 
it's so important in the song that he plays the way he does and composes those lines that he did. And uh, yeah, uh, the last point I want to do is the just the outro, where you can hear Pino has given has been given the green light to go crazy, to do what he wants, keep the energy up, play lots on lots of notes. It's so so super impressive. Listen to this. So he's, uses, uh, he's using the octaves uh, super a lot, and he's using the ninth, which is like the uh, above the octave. Which is very nice, and he, he doesn't seem to run out of ideas either, so... It's very creative, very nice, superbly done. Very well done, Pino. Super nice. And now, over to that last section that I promised, the Pino interview. I know this might be actually becoming a, a little bit of a long, too long video, but we are not going to care about that because this interview here is very fun. I'm going to show you two parts of it, but I recommend you to watch the whole thing. Uh, they are also talking to the producer and engineer of this song. Now listen to this and just enjoy it. And um, if you like this channel, please click like and subscribe to it uh, and all that jazz. But the most important bit, Le learn and listen to Pino if you're a bass player. You have to. He's just that good. Anyways, those two sections is going to be my last point. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sessions. So did they say to you that... Did they give that no. to you in dots or... Oh God, it to no, you? no. I, I can't even read music. So if they, if they did, they wouldn't have had much joy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just something I kind of hear it in my head when they suggested um, something for the intro, and I just had an idea to play this melody, which was a... Now, when you get to this... It's the sound of that song! Well, that's actually Stravinsky, so we'd have to give credit to Stravinsky on that bit. That's one of his melodies. Just left the studio and, uh, and wondered if I would hear that on the album, or in fact, if it would make it on the album, because you never know. The next time I heard it was on the radio, you know, um, and I heard that intro and really, I felt really embarrassed. Why? Well, because it was sort of out there in front and I, I thought it sounds a bit out of tune. All musicians are the same. We all think we're, we're rubbish, you know. We're all that's so self-critical. Yeah, but I mean, that's, that's... I remember being really nervous and thinking, damn, Laurie, why did you mix it so high, you know? Everyone's going to hear that. I'll never <laughs> get any other point? gigs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What impact did playing on this record have on your career? It, it had a huge impact and it led to me getting a lot of people asking me to play that kind of thing on their songs. I mean, immediately after that record I get a call from Dave Gilmore from Pink Floyd and I played on his solo album. Um, and then Elton John, Pete Townsend, just lots of amazing artists. It was, it was just a, a roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. 